Welcome to the First Time Facilitator Podcast. I'm your host, Leanne Hughes, and I'm here to help you create unpredictable workshop experiences that predictably work. Now, on the show last week, we had Deborah Zahn from the Craft of Consulting. As you know, with First Time Facilitator, it doesn't just focus on the craft of facilitation. I love bringing in experts that talk about building business because I'm recently out of corporate life, 18 months in as a solopreneur, and there's a lot of lessons that you can learn to hopefully accelerate your journey if you want to take this career path as a facilitator. So I had a few amazing guests on previously. Warren James, another guest, he lives in Brisbane, has released a book. So I thought it was time for a solo episode. And to be honest, I have just been getting so much energy from our Facebook group called The Flip Chart. And if you're wondering what that is, and if you're wondering and listening in and thinking, Leanne's audio sounds a little bit different today, that's because I'm giving love back to the Facebook group and I'm recording this in Facebook Live on the flip chart. So we've got flip chart is here interacting with the content. This is a live recording, very different to my other solo episodes where I do write bullet points and I do pause and I do hit stop when I stuff up. You won't see that today. I'll have to keep going. The show must go on. Or as Kiel Lutz would say in a previous podcast, the show must go online. Isn't that the best name for a workshop? Okay, so this show is uh, sponsored by our new program called Virtually Possible 2.0. You've got a few more days to enroll in that. Head on over to join.virtuallypossible.co or simply virtuallypossible.co and you'll grab the details there. That is the last one we're running for the year. Get in while you can before do doors close. And anything mentioned in this episode as well as a recording. And you might need to have a peek at the recording because I'm sharing a few interesting um, images and screenshots and questions. Uh, you can view the video for that as well in the show notes for this one over at firsttimefacilitator.com forward slash episode 143. Okay, so what are we talking about today? Now, like I said, this is going to be a bit of some prompts of what I'm sharing. But also, if you've got questions and comments when you're watching in live, just write them in and I'd love to either myself, I'll have a go at answering it, or you've got over 1,100 facilitators from around the world who can help you as well. And that's the beauty of, of this group. Okay, so what I'd love to share with you, and I apologise for uh, Gay is having to leave. She's being hijacked by dinner duties. Yeah, you're an hour ahead, so it's 5 p.m. Friday as we record. and I've got a glass of bubbles with me to make it even more fun. What we're talking about today is a few questions that came up in the group. The first one was from Prina. She was a previous guest on the show and I'll share her question in a moment about group coaching and how to design uh, that around a leadership program. The second topic I'd love to discuss is hybrid sessions. This is what I mean by keeping the, the topics current. So a couple of, oh no, not a couple of months ago, probably four weeks ago, I was running a workshop where we had people in Brisbane face-to-face, -face, we had people in Perth that were in an office room face-to-face -face, and we had to dial in. So it was like a hybrid session. Uh, what made it even more hybrid that I didn't know beforehand but the client uh, revealed to me on the day was that we also had two people from Brisbane dialing in from their homes. So it really was this mess but it worked well and I'll share my strategies on how that worked. And the third one is how to say goodbye when you're leaving your virtual sessions. That came up from Paul, really great question. And of course, if you've got questions as you join us live, let us know. Always time for bubbles, absolutely. Yuri? All right, so question one, and I'll just take a moment to grab a drink while um, we reflect on this question here. So for those of you um, listening in, I'll read the question out for you that came through from Prina. So Prina said, help needed. Does anyone have a layout ideas for a face-to-face -face group coaching session? My client will be delivering the leadership development modules and I will follow with group coaching to reinforce the learning. All help, tips, ideas, muchos appreciated. Now, Prina, you've got seven comments there from, I think Catherine and Leanne will write back some awesome ideas on things that you can do. And I just wanted to add to that. So I'm, first of all, can we just say, it's amazing that the client is looking at embedding the leadership modules. Cause what we usually see, um, and I shouldn't be, I shouldn't brand it 
all for every client, but it's usually a workshop and it's a one and done thing, right? So you're on a workshop and then it's you're out and then nothing ever happens. So I love that you're being brought in to embed the learning. So how can you do that? Now, um, in her thread, she mentioned a few constraints or just conditions around this. So the first one is she's got about 10 leaders in each session. Each session runs for about one and a half hours. These leaders, they aren't in the same team. So they could be from a cross section of the business coming together, which means you know, when you think about that, it's like, okay, so how safe are they in sharing information? How quickly can you build that up in the one and a half hour session? And then she's got all these sessions running after them, after one after another, I think 12 sessions in total. So the first thing I would do, and if you're tuning in, how would you design for this? Are there any things that you'd consider when running an embedding type of situation like this? Let us know into chat what you would do. When I read this, I was like, oh, um, and some of the ideas already popped up in the comments. But when we look at embedding, the first thing I would do is not, is PowerPoint is out, flip charts are in. And I would consider, talk to the client about the key, key models that were covered in that program. Then what I would do, and this is an awesome Tim Pence strategy. Oh, Ken, you've lost sound. Hopefully it's not my microphone. If it is, if anyone else has lost sound, just let me know and I can switch microphones. Cause it's a podcast, we need audio. Um, what I have done in the past is I've actually just drawn all the mod models up, the key models, one flip chart for each model, posted them around the room. What that does is then you can start forming connections between different models. They're all there, right? As opposed to PowerPoint, where it is, you, you click and then you click to another slide and it's gone. So flip charts all around the room with the key models. Hopefully there aren't too many models. That's the other thing I see crammed into workshops is model like 15 minutes to throw a model in, let's throw another one in. Uh, so hopefully that's not the case, Prina. The good thing about leaders in organizations is they've all got challenges. Everyone's got a challenge. Everyone likes to share their war story. One thing, I don't even know what this is called. I'm sure there's a clever name for it. And do you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take that ticker off the screen. It's called a crawler, um, but it can be distracting. I think you got the message. <laughs> so what you can do is, you set mini groups up, so huddles, and you prep people beforehand and you say, look, consider what's happened in your role since doing the leadership program. What problems have you got as a leader? What, you know, what have you encountered? What would you like to share? And you use this as like a collective brains trust. So what I'd suggest is getting into people into groups and you do this with really robust timings. This could also be done virtually as well. If you had a group of four, one person goes first and they've got two or three minutes to share their problem. Like I'm working with someone that um, just doesn't respect me. These are some incidents that happen and you tell the story. You've given three minutes to tell the story and provide the details. Then you stop, you get the story out, have a bit of a break. And then the three people in the group, they then have three minutes to ask you questions. So you've just got to respond. And you can adjust the timing depending on, on how it works for you. Wait for that to respond and then you respond to them, sorry, and then stop the time. While they're asking questions, they might be thinking of solutions. And then in the third three minutes or however long you want to run this for, the group then fires suggestions at you. And all you can do then is sit there and go, thank you. So you can't go, I've tried that, but you just go, thank you, thank you. And then at the end of that session, that mini huddle, uh, you ask that leader, okay, out of all the responses that were given to you and advice, which one was most useful for you? Which one will you run with? Uh, yeah, so that's that's really basic. Yuri, two to three minutes of nonstop talking so that I don't overthink and over -censor. Yeah, that's right. I think you're right about constraints and, and the leaner you can go, the more organic it will be. And you can bring in things like that, the Tibetan bells. I should have, I've got them in my facilitation pack. The Tibetan bells, I'm just gonna hide uh, Prina's. Yeah, the Tibetan bells to call time. If you're doing it virtually, there's also a website called Time Blocks and you can have the timer on the screen. Of course, they might be in breakout rooms. So you can also just send time notifications through that. Uh, you're talking about the problem. Yep, exactly. 
thought he wrote there was two to three minutes to talk about the problem, to let it all out. But so the prep's really important here. So I would suggest getting to think about that story before they come in. Pregnant, you've only got an hour and a half. So it's gonna be quite quick and you wanna prep them as much as they can. Also recognizing that people don't do prep work. So build that into your plans. So the flip chart, that, and the other cool activity I've seen done, we did this in mining. It was a based on a TV series called Hypothetical, uh, an ABC TV series. And what they do is they have all these different case studies and you go around a circle. So you might have the 10 people in a, sitting in a circle. This is a face-to-face -face workshop we're talking about. And you have a series of ethical dilemmas that happen. Now, in your case, it could be leadership problems. So you might see, um, and it depends on what, you, what your focus is on and what models you want to explore. Things that we've used in the past have been, uh, you know that your manager is sponsoring the local sporting club because his son works there or there might be a conflict of interest. What do you do? What do you do next? And what you do is you go around and that the next person answers that and then you have a discussion around it. Then you throw out a new problem and it's kind of like it, it takes some work to draft out the hypothetical, but it is so great because you take real examples of what's going on with the client. And so get those stories crafted into something and then watch the debate and the conversation unravel. And your role as facilitator then is try to squeeze in using the flip charts that are around the room, what models would link in to support you communicating that or providing feedback or working with conflict or communication styles. That's really, really kind of fun. Uh, it's dramatic and something a little bit different. So check out the TV series. It's called Hypothetical. I'm sure it's on YouTube and you can see what I mean, but the skill there is crafting, crafting the story. So pretty that's my tips for you. And I'm sure you'll get some more ideas back in the flip chart. Now the second, I welcome, first of all, if you're joining us live, welcome. We're recording episode 143 of the First Time Facilitator podcast live. I've got a few prompts here, but if you've got any questions or comments, I'm interacting with you. So this is not an evergreen podcast. Just let me know. Um, when I spoke about prep work, Yuri said, uh, because people don't do prep work, spend your first X minutes when you have them there to just do that. Love that. So that could be a great icebreaker. It's like turn to the person next to you. What's happened in the last month that's been amazing that you want to celebrate? I always like starting with a positive question. And then what's something that's been a bit of a challenge with your team that you'd love to walk out having solved today? A couple of questions like that gets people talking, gets them primed into that activity. Great idea. I've done hypotheticals, they work well and people at all levels enjoy them, especially if the answers are not obvious. Thanks, Ken, I agree. It's like, just reminds me of uh, those choose your own adventure novels when you're a kid, it's like it could go anywhere and you really get great discussion out of it. When people say, I'll do this, it also reflects their values. It leads into values conversations. So yeah, uh, and I don't, to be honest, I haven't seen them done um, that often, yeah. So when I went to the mining company, it was just there, my boss, Daryl Cox. G'day, Daryl, if you're ever listening or watching. Um, he just threw this hypothetical that had been crafted and I was reading it going, this is the coolest thing. So yeah, and the drama plays out. It's cool. So the second, the second topic I'd love to explore, if you don't have any questions or comments, is the hybrid session. Now, <laughs> this all depends on this might be relevant for you it depends on what part of the world that you're in at the moment i'm lucky enough to be in brisbane queensland where we're allowed to go out we're allowed to get into rooms there's social distancing uh so i was running a face-to-face -face workshop last month and it did feel weird it did feel weird and i felt a really kind of giddy with excitement when i was facilitating it but it wasn't a traditional face-to-face -face session with just 10 people in the room we had to dial in another group we had two mining engineers in Perth and as I arrived to the workshop I was told that we also had two people individuals dialing in from Brisbane uh, from their own computers now the assumption here is that there's video conference connecting the two rooms there wasn't there was no video conferencing so I am lucky I've got two MacBooks one that just won't die the one that I'm using at the moment it's like a Toyota it just I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm glad it won't die, but it's been running since oh, for eight years. It's just amazing. And I've got this new one that, yeah, hardly, I, I feel terrible, but I just, I just want to kill this one first. Anyway, so I got in nice and early. I think it was 
the workshop started at 9.30 and I was there at quarter to eight. Giddy with excitement, first workshop. And I walk in and it's like, crap, no video conferencing, all good. So I had one laptop and actually we'll share with you in the stream. So if you're listening, I apologize. I'll try to describe it. That's me taking a selfie of the room set up. Uh, I don't know if you can see that on the screen, but I had my new MacBook up the front of the room and it's got a wide screen. The camera, I just used the, the internal camera on that and connected it to the Wi-Fi. So that, if you can see the image on that PowerPoint, you can see that it captured everyone in the room. So it was set up, the, the, the space was great. Um, and then I had the laptop that I'm currently using, the Toyota of, of MacBooks in front of me and I had my webcam on it. So then when I dialed into Zoom, I was actually dialing into Zoom on the same account. What that means is sound is weird. You've got to put earphones in. To, uh, I won't get into too much detail, but just be wary. When you dial into Zoom on two computers using the same account, there can be some sound issues. So you need like headphones to mute the sound. Okay, so I had that set up. I had the other MacBook facing me. I had a, a mouse that had Bluetooth. This is sounding really complex. I'll have to draw, draw it out for you, but it ended up working really well. Moral of the story is it worked well. I had my microphone with me. What I would suggest next time, it only has about a two meter lead on it, auxiliary cable. I'll get a longer one so we could pass it around the room and get people to talk into that. Uh, that was probably the hardest part, not using a room with video conferencing facilities was sound. And sound is so important. As we know, if you have bad sound, it's very easy to tap out. Uh, the, the computer is like the Terminator. Yeah, it and hopefully touch wood, it won't die after I've just said this. But that was my setup frame in Brisbane. The people dialing in could see me as if I was there. So I'm actually very close. It was my face up to that MacBook. Um, the microphone, the sound was good. And we got people to report back. We would pass the microphone around. I also, if you can see in that image, I had my Boom UE3 uh, it's Bluetooth speaker that was on as well. So the sound coming through, if anyone was coming, was talking to us in Brisbane, that would pick it up. And yeah, just DIY the hybrid session. Now, the key piece of software that enabled this, so Zoom, it was, was very helpful, of course. I'll just take a quick breather. And yeah, if you've got questions, let's send them through. Thanks for joining me today, by the way. Thanks for spending your Friday with me. The, uh, the key piece of software was something called Nearpod, N-E-A-R-P-O-D. I was deliberating. I was like, should I use Mentimeter, Slido, Nearpod? It's free. Unbelievable. I'm going to hide my selfie here. If you're listening to the podcast, I'm just showing a screenshot of Nearpod, free tool, Gosh, it's absolutely incredible. What I will do is actually minimize myself. So I'll add a bit of contrast in. So what I'm doing, if you're listening to the podcast, is I'm just shuffling around images on the screen to create a bit of contrast because people get really bored with static images on their screen. You have a look at this. So just if you, oh, honestly, open another tab if you're watching this, head on to nearpod.com, sign up for a free account and just play with it. I created my slides in Google Slides and I imported them in here. And when I was creating the slides, I had gaps. So every three or four slides, I would have a question or an activity or a poll designed in. Then I imported it in and I recreated those quizzes, polls, uh, features within it. So what I encourage everyone to do, so it doesn't, didn't matter whether you were in Brisbane or Perth or dialing in from home, I asked you to get out your phone or tablet, head to nearpod.com, put in the code and interact with the presentation. And what that, that means is I'm driving the presentation from my computer. I can share results. They've got a really cool range of activities. One is, um, oh, I think I wrote, oh yeah, just draw what you're doing on the weekend. So people are drawing things and then you submit it, you see it live on the screen. Uh, and the cool thing about that, as opposed to whiteboard and Zoom, is that you can actually see who's drawn what. It says uh, like John Strip. John's drawn this and yeah, it's, it's really fun. And it made the session nearpod.com. So underrated, check it out. If you're doing hybrid, has anyone heard of Nearpod? No. 
yep, like I said, underrated. All right. So if you are joining us live, we've got five of you here live, let us know. I'm going to have a bit of a breather. So complete this sentence, a great facilitator dot, 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 does what? A great facilitator dot, 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 let us know. I've just put the crawler back on the screen for those of you who are just joining us live. I know people come and go uh, all through this. And guess what? That's okay because you can get the recording live to your podcast app, episode 143 of the First Time Facilitated Podcast, coming straight to your podcast app on Monday. Let's see what we've got here. A great facilitator doesn't talk too much. That was the best part of the conversation. Thank you, Ken, for that. When I spoke to Wanda in Madrid and he was talking about the ratio, that was a big watershed moment for him, was he thought the facilitator had to, you know, it was an 80-20 and he reflected on that and he said, how much time am I spending talking in these workshops? And when you are on that 80-20 ratio, it is more lecture style. Now, I'm very aware of the irony of this. I'm recording a podcast. You, you are you are typing at me. So it's hundred percent Leanne. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I've got nothing on that, but yeah, great facilitators. Absolutely. Don't talk too much. You know, they let the group take the, uh, take that role. Suzanne, great to have you here. Suzanne's hosted many fun flip chart events at her beautiful home, just South of Brisbane. Great facilitators pre prepares well in advance. Absolutely. Ask lots of questions to get the info from the group. I'd love to combine those two. Prepares well in advance and asks lots of questions. When we look at preparation, and I don't know if this is, uh, Suzanne, let me know your thoughts or anyone else that's joining us live. When we look at preparation, it's always the content and the information. I want to link those two topics. You said ask lots of questions. Suzanne or anyone else joining us, do you actually prepare those questions? beforehand as well like oh this is a controversial question or this one will create a lot of dialogue do you prepare the questions as well love to know and Yuri a great facilitator knows that every group is different and constantly finds ways to make it work every situation is different and what was the title um Marcus Crowe the episode did with him he said there is no such thing as a difficult group only an inflexible facilitator Mic drop. That was awesome. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts. Love these. Love these. Okay. Now, this one is, I'm not going to be the content expert on this one. I am keen to know your thoughts because we had some, um, I do have some thoughts and because I am the person talking because I'm on a podcast, <laughs> I'll share them, but I'm keen to know what you think too. Paul asked an amazing question. Paul is over in New Zealand and he said, when you close up a virtual meeting, do you A, say goodbye and hit the big old end meeting for everyone button, quick smart? Do you B, say goodbye, then let everyone slowly leave the meeting one by one? What do you do in your virtual meetings when you have to end them, when you have to say goodbye? Paul has been doing A, but he feels like a big meanie. Like, no, you can't play anymore because I said so. I totally know how you feel, Paul. So the first suggestion I would make, and if you are joining us live, please let me know, how are you ending your calls? It does feel a little bit cold, right? It feels like you're just pushing people out the door. Uh, that could be an advantage. That could, <laughs> I, I do love, I love hanging around and talking to people after a workshop. But sometimes, I mean, we've all been, uh, please, like I'm being human here. We've all been in situations where we're like, okay, I do need to go now. Um, or is it just me? <laughs> oh, maybe it's just me. All right. Um, Suzanne's responded to that. I asked her about the preparing questions. She said, not usually, but instead of making the statement, rephrase it into a question. Awesome. The wisdom is usually in the group and the answers are there. You just need to ask the question. Lovely. That also spurs into the whole question around what do you do when you ask the question and you're not getting the response? Do you adjust the question? Do you 
you know, what do you do? These are all the things that come out when you are a first time facilitator, even more seasoned as well. Like, what do you do in that moment? Okay. Ken tried B option. So say goodbye, then let everyone slowly leave. It felt a bit weird. Next time I will mention something I'll talk about for another couple of minutes. Yeah, I think that's important. Let's talk about that SCARF model. I always talk about uh, SCARF as an acronym, David Rock, status, certainty, autonomy, relatedness, and fairness. Now, booting people out, what are you rewarding? What are you threatening there? Autonomy, perhaps. The autonomy, I, I want to stay here. I want to discuss. But what about your own autonomy as a facilitator? It's like, well, I've got back-to-back -back meetings now. I've, I've got to shoot. That's what I consider because I'm usually that person that's got the back-to-back. Um, what I'm doing now is if I know I've got a workshop that goes for an hour, I might either reduce the time to like a 53 minute meeting or a 50 minute because then it's different. And, and I think people will appreciate that because they also have back-to-back -back meetings. And I don't think it's very healthy hanging up one meeting and just dumping into the next one because you, you know, you haven't moved around, you're bringing that legacy into the, the other one. So I like giving people that, that white space, even just in between meetings because they're no longer moving between rooms. They're literally just sitting there. So I would suggest giving them more space. But if I do have a session where I think, oh, it's an hour, I will actually then book up the next half hour in case. And I don't think, Paul, there is a hard and fast response for A or B. It really depends on the context, what's going on, the people that are involved, how busy are they? Because the other thing, and just from a participant perspective, is I love meetings that finish on time. I love leaving at the time that I was meant to be leaving. So I respect that as a facilitator as well. But if you bring in the autonomy piece, then it's like, okay, I'll give you an option. If, if you do want to stay longer, there's an opportunity to do that. I remember when COVID first hit and we ran a happy hour. I'm going to add some contrast here and just, there we go, full screen. Um, when we first had COVID, COVID hit, and uh, we had the flip chart happy hour. And it was from five till six. And I think I'd made plans after that. I don't know what the plan was. It was like maybe just roll into the lounge room. But <laughs> And the conversation was going, but I was like, I'm tired. I've been on Zoom calls all day. And all I did was I made Catherine, who was on the call, I made her a co-host because I wanted to stay longer. So I just gave her my co-host responsibility and I left the meeting. So you've got to be just, yeah, be a bit careful about that with who you give it to because you might, again, if it, you need your account for another meeting, you, you'll need everyone to go. But I really do think it's what you need to take into control is, okay, if it does go over time, do I have that time to give them? What are some smart strategies of exiting this? Uh, so Tom, scan or being virtually possible, we were meeting in Kumo space and we're like, oh, it gets awkward when people leave and are like, bye, bye. And so he said, right, we're going to do a race. I'm going to count down from three, three, two, one. The last person to leave the room is a loser. And that was it. And so just like, oh my God, and we, because there were a few of us that were really competitive. So we're sort of just hanging out on our mouse, ready to ex exit the room. And yeah, that was really fun. So we just all exited it. Um, Jacinta Cubis, when I was on her workshop, she does that one where you say one thing that you learned and then you pass to someone else and you leave. And then it's like a nice sort of domino effect of people leaving the room. I think that was really nice. Well, I wanted to hear what other people had to say. Uh, what else is there? Ken is sharing. There's a podcast I listen to that finishes, then adds five minutes of extra time where they wrap up with the things I forgot to mention. The main part works well. Love that. Cool. That's a really great idea. So you could have um, maybe a slide or something of your main points that just plays. You might even want to start, you could use the music to play some like Oscars wrap up music, some like piano instrumental, have that really low, then maybe a bit of a crescendo when it's time to leave. You might put, just have a bit of play, play with it, have like a countdown clock, you know, this Zoom room will self-destruct in two minutes. You know, that might be going on. You might be give people a backup room. You might go, hey, here's a link to Kumo Space. If you want to continue the conversation, head over to this tool or let's meet on another medium. I don't know, but just giving out options here for you. So good. And we also, Yuri, uh, introduced the wave of the week, the wow. I'm just going to grab a quick sip here. So what we did was on our weekly calls, as part of uh, virtually possible, we would say, right, 
what's the wave of the week? And it could be something silly, like it could be just be a wave. Or it could be like the royal wave, or it could be, I don't know, a bit of a dance. Yeah. You can just introduce that, have a bit of fun with it and give someone accountability uh, when you jump on the call and say, right, uh, Ken, now it's your turn to provide our wave of the week. Give, give Ken some time. Uh, Yuri, maybe have a separate digital place to meet, more casual. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Love this. All right. One more question for you. Actually, what I might do, I've got a question on the agenda, but I might Murray Guest is a member of the Flipchart. He's been on the podcast two or three times and I've got his cards here. These are called the Inspired Conversation Cards. Uh, and these are great for icebreakers. So question for you, if you're joining us live is, if you could be an animal, which animal would you be and why? Now, if you are listening on the podcast, there is about a 20 second delay when you are live streaming into Facebook. So it's, Think of a face-to-face -face workshop where you'd ask a question and it's usually about a five second delay, right? For people to think about it. And then the extroverts or the Ds on the disc profile or the eyes will respond. Uh, but it takes a bit longer. If you could be an animal, which animal would you be and why? If we're talking about animals which reflect ourselves, I'd probably be, um, I've been told a parrot before. <laughs> Uh, by my own father at my 21st birthday and a uh you know just talks a bit hence this podcast hence why i'm in podcasting and facilitation uh and or a butterfly because it's just like flittering around yuri would be a jack russell terrier and why is that i think we all know energetic restless playful and he's written in caps incredibly smart awesome Okay. And so look, that's about to, that's, we're going to wrap up this episode. How long have we gone? Five, about 30 minutes. Awesome. It's great timing. So if you are joining us, first of all, Yuri and I released a course this week. It was a free mini course from Zoom Teague to Zoom Tastic. If you want to catch up on the videos that we released, so we released tips on things that you can do before, during and after your workshop. These are in a three part video series. You can head on over to virtually possible dot co forward slash zoom tastic that's virtually possible dot co forward slash zoom tastic doesn't matter when you're listening to this those videos are being made available for you so you can see the quick tips that we came up with one thing that i mentioned i was watching the after video again today uh we ripped on the spot honestly uh one thing i did mention was could you create for your workshop in podcasts, we've got show notes and every episode I'm saying, head on over to firsttimefacilitator.com forward slash episode 143 and you'll find the links to the person I interviewed and all the other stuff. Could you do that for your workshop? So could you say to your group and pre-prepare this so you don't, you don't be exhausted after a workshop? It's the last thing you want to do. Have that email ready to go. This is what we mentioned on the show. This is some, uh, the show, the workshop. Here are some books I'd recommend. Here's a curated Spotify podcast playlist for you. Here are the contact details of everyone that was there. And there you go. There you go. And if you are keen to join our program, like I said, at the beginning of the show, doors close in the next couple of days if you're listening to the podcast. If you're watching this live, we close doors in six days, the 22nd of October. Head on over to virtuallypossible.co for all the details there. So can I just say a big, big, big thank you to those of you who have joined us live. I could see, I could see Yuri, we had Ken, we had Gay, Suzanne. Um, I could see that coming up. So thank you so much for participating. For those that were watching and didn't interact, that's totally cool. That's what this is for. And this is why I'm actually doing a, a live stream is to also give you alternatives for just getting everyone to hop on a Zoom call. I had a really great analogy as I wrap this up. I had a really, really great analogy the other day of when you are going to uh, like watching a keynote speech or going to a workshop, sometimes you, sometimes it's nice just being the observer, sitting back, listening to it all, being in the audience and not being a full participant. And I think what we're seeing a lot these days is we want information transfer, we do want interaction, but we're getting everyone to jump on calls with their video on, with their audio on, and that creates a level of expectation. And I think it's nice sometimes, particularly on a Friday, 
to just sit back with your headphones on. You could be on the iPad, on the couch. You could be anywhere in the world just watching. You don't even have to end up in chat. You just want to get the information and see what's going on. And I think that's pretty cool too. I think it's a great option. So thank you for joining us live, Suzanne. Awesome. Yuri, awesome. Ken, Gay, thank you. Thank you for watching it live. And if you have are watching the replay on in the Facebook group, the flip chart, just write replay in the comments and sing out if anything resonated for you. So I would ask you that if you are still here, what's one thing that did stand out for you today? It doesn't have to be something new that you learned, but just like, oh yeah, I remember that. And that's interesting. So share into chat, what is one thing that stood out for you today? And if you're listening to this podcast, wherever you are in the future, uh, thank you so much for, for tuning in. And I'm, I'm asking you the same question. What's one thing that you that really stood out for you today? Suzanne's written, it's tricky dealing with kids and dinner time, but thank goodness for Bluetooth earpiece and the mobile fine phone to watch you through. Exactly, right? Suzanne could just participate as an observer, but still felt like she was part of it. And I, that's what I love about live streaming. Yuri was, what stood out for him was how to end your sessions. Cool. Glad you got lots of ideas. And Ken, rethinking a forgotten part of an event, the end. Actually, yeah, it's funny, Ken, in my 12 rules for facilitation, that's, I think, oh gosh, what rule was it? Number eight? I should, I should know that. But it is uh, focus on the cool down routine. We all focus on warming up. How much do we spend on designing the beginning? Like I remember when I was a first time facilitator, I would have these word documents of like one minute, two minutes, three minutes, and all the activities listed out scripted at the beginning. And at the end, it was just like, okay, ask a question. I really didn't put the effort into the start. And I think it's all about the ending, ending strong. You know that canon hospitality, right? You have a really great experience up front, but if you stuff up the bill or you can't split the bill, it leaves a sour taste in your mouth, right? So that alternative way to connect live, you nailed it. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And for those that are listening on the podcast, this is a definitely an experiment. Keen to hear your thoughts. This, this episode was really built for those that joined us live. Um, and hopefully that encourages you to give live streaming a go as a way to facilitate your sessions. They don't all have to be full interactive. So the tool that I'm using now is b.live. Um, you can find it at app.blive.tv. There are amazing tools. We can talk about live streaming in the flip chart after this. And do you know what's really awkward now is that I'm going to have to say goodbye to all of you. Uh, so what I might do is end the show officially and then I'm happy to stick around and have a bit of a chat based on what we spoke about earlier. So if you're listening into the podcast, thank you so much for joining us. Look forward to bringing you an interview on the show next week. And as always, if you'd like to join the conversation when the show is over, join our community of over 1,100 facilitators from all over the world talking about facilitation and sharing their ideas as well. Ciao.